All right. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Python Meetup. Thank you, everybody, for coming. My name is Pete Fine. Uh, this is our third or fourth, I think, meetup since we kind of revitalized things in the last, last couple months here. And so thank you all for coming. Uh, if you came to this through the Code and Supply meetup group, uh, there's also a kind of separate subgroup for the the Pittsburgh, uh, sorry, for Python activities specifically, you might want to consider joining. So if we have messages or whatever. Uh, in terms of joining, also please consider joining Code and Supply. Uh, you know, this space obviously costs money and there's a lot of great events here and kind of doesn't happen without your support. Um, tonight, in a little bit, we're going to have a talk from Alec Jarachenko. Yes, yeah, close, close enough. Uh, about uh, the PID API. Um, Next month, which is July, uh, Jesse Legg is going to talk about asynchronous uh, I.O. in Python and robots, uh, which I think should be pretty cool. Um, in August, uh, we have Bartholomew Elliott uh, is talking about type annotations, static type checking, linting, uh, all the kind of various tools that you, know, you can use in modern Python to make sure you have like a high quality, high quality code base. Uh, in September, I think we're going to do something a little different, uh, a round panel discussion uh, about packaging and distribution. So all the different ways like you take your Python code and do things with it, whether that's put it out you know, to download on PyPy to the world or uh, uh, get it up on the servers or whatever. And so uh, we're looking for panelists uh, to help with that. I'm hoping somebody can explain Anaconda to me because I just, I have no idea. I like, I just like, I, I just, I don't know. I come from the other, the other end of, of the Python universe. And so, yeah, I mean, even just, uh, uh, I think it's going to be, you know, we'll get into some advanced stuff, but kind of try to keep it general enough because it is, this, the ecosystem has gotten complicated enough that even experienced people don't, don't know all that much. Um, I think what else? Uh, yeah, and so I guess let's just kind of kind of jump into the module of the month. Uh, every month we go do a short little warm up uh, introduction to uh, a module from the standard library, or maybe outside. Um, uh, there's this fantastic site called Python Module of the Week, uh, which is the standard library by example. Uh, and I recommend it if you mod one module a month is not enough for you. Uh, you can you can get one every week. Um, no, I don't. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So in one of my favorite modules in the standard library is called collections. It's actually so useful. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in there. We're only going to talk about one of these subparts. We might come back to this module in the future. Um, uh, the, the thing I want to talk about today is called a deck, which is a double, uh, a data structure called double ended queue. People read this. Good. Yeah. Uh, Folks are probably familiar with the with the standard queue and a stack as data structures. So you have a kind of a first in first out data structure and our last in first out data structure, uh, which is a stack. A deck is basically those two together. So you have fast insertions and reads at either end, and everything in the middle is slow. Uh, and right, you can kind of see. So there's a it's thought of it having a right end uh, and a left end, and you can kind of append to the right pop off the right quickly and pen to the left, pop off the left quickly. And this turns out to be a really useful uh, little data structure in a whole lot of places. Um, kind of see here, right? So start from either end. They work a lot like a list. The main difference from a, a you know, which you can grow it to arbitrary size. The, the difference is that on a list, standard, standard you know, built-in list, lookups are like random lookups are constant, constant time. So finding something in the middle takes the same time as finding something on the ends, whereas a deck, that all those operations in the middle, you can do them, but they're much, much slower. Uh, and the trade-off you get for that is this fast access at the ends. So you have basically the same kind of operations you would have on a list, uh, extending and appending, but you have these left versions which operate on the left side as well as on the right side. Um, much like a list, you know, you can pop things off Right, and you can pop either from the left or the right. Yeah. So what would be the functional difference between you say there's a left end, just shifting and unshifting off of it? Uh, whether, how how you interpret the left and the right side is up to you. Okay. 
yeah, there's no, they're, they're basically equivalent in speed. There's no kind of particular meaning. Um, you know, we index from the left. So, uh, yeah, uh, it kind of works the same way. Um, so this example is showing that the, like, these things are thread safe. And this is a funny little example. It's like, it's like a candle burning at both ends. It's a different pair of threads. Uh, kind of consume, you know, so, so putting, putting, you know, you can use this as a, a queue between threads. You put items on one side and pop them off on the other. Um, we'll come back to this rotating in a sec. Uh, the other cool thing you can do with these is you can give it a maximum size and that as you put in new elements, it will just drop older ones. So you can say, hey, this, this deck can only get to hold 10 elements. And as I push things on to the left, things fall off the right. And that, that turns out to be super useful. Um, it's, uh, you can use it to implement like ring buffers. So if you've got something you want to buffer, but you want to limit the amount of memory it's going to take up. Um, I'll show you some other nice examples. Uh, yeah, uh, here's some good recipes here. Ooh, let me find your mouse cursor. Uh, so this is the standard library docs. So this is actually showing it uh, that you can basically implement tail, like the Unix tail utility says, hey, give me the last 10 lines. That you can just use this, I like this recipe a lot. Um, you can say, hey, here's an iterator of like 100 items, 1,000 items, how many ever. Populate this deck that only holds 10 things. And so just rip through it, and then kind of at the end, the 10 that you have left are the lines you care about. Uh, um, there is also this, uh, other good things you can do with this is like moving averages. So you say, Hey, like I'm getting new items over time and I want to keep produce the, you know, uh, the 30 day average, the average of the last 30 days and say, okay, I stored that and then I update it with a new element. This recipe is really elegant here. Um, I think this is really, really nice. Uh, the last operation on these guys is this rotation. This is, I never use this. Okay. So the other thing that you can do with these is you can rotate them really fast. Is that so? Basically, it's like a shuffle. I mean, think musical chairs, right? Everybody gets up and slides one chair down. Uh, and so because, right, the operations at the end are quick, you can imagine it just pops one off the left side and sticks it on the right. And so you can kind of do that a whole bunch of times. I've never actually found a good use for that, uh, surprisingly. I've just, I'm not really, I mean, I just, I see why it's, why it's sort of a natural operation on the data structure, but I've never actually found anything good to do with it. Um, but these are all sorts of sorts of handy uh, implementing like la least recently used buff, uh, caches, right? Like you want to keep an or access order of things that have kind of popped out of your cache. You can use it for things like that. Um, anyway, that's a deck. Uh, check it out. There's a whole bunch more great.